Welcome to the sixth annual Turf and Tools podcast. Yes, I said annual. I just realized we've made six now. I saw a stat earlier that it's like 90% of podcasts don't get past um, three episodes. So. Oh, there you go. Hello, everyone. And we actually stuck to the one a week. We haven't fallen apart yet. No, we haven't missed anything. Yeah, we've managed to keep up. We've, uh, yeah, mm. even when we've been super busy, we've made it happen. So big pats on the back to us. I have to apologize. We did a giveaway <laughs> last week uh, of the lawn mowing simulator game for Switch. We had two copies of that to give away. Um, in my infancy, my infant knowledge of podcasts, I didn't realize that you don't like leave your details when you leave a review for yep. <laughs> the podcast. That was part of the, the deal for entering. So we have to redo the giveaway. So I do apologize for that. But to make up for it, I do have something even better to give away, which are the Milwaukee M12 um, brushless pruning shears, the electronic pruning shears. Awesome. That's an awesome get. Have you asked Milwaukee? Uh, well, these were sent to me to review. So, right, um, there you go. Yeah, so I have opened them, used them once or twice, but they are still completely functional. I think it's a, uh, a decent prize. We might have a bit more clarity around how to enter this competition. So we'll have two copies of Lawn Mowing Simulator for Switch to give away and um, the shears. So we'll have three winners, which we will announce on podcast number eight. So not ne next podcast, the, the week after, we'll give people a chance to enter. All you have to do to enter is go and comment on this podcast um, on the Turf and Tools YouTube page. Okay, so specifically on YouTube. Yeah, just... Right. What, I what's think I'm going to go... Milwaukee. Let's use the code word Milwaukee. Unfortunately, it's Australian-only entrance, which is like 91% of our podcast audience anyway, so... Mm -hmm. I'm going to go... Take a look at that camera again, because I think I can okay. still hear the audio. Fair enough, Carthy. Because just going to check the camera again. We are live streaming on Instagram again, uh, just to try and let people know that we do have a podcast and answer any questions in the meantime. But yeah, if you do want to enter that giveaway, comment Milwaukee on the YouTube version of this podcast. Podcast number six, Turf and Tools. Very easy to find. Uh, if it doesn't work, Carthy, you might just have to axe it. I'm going to give Karthik... We're going to... Karthik's going to give us an update on what he's been doing in his lawn. He told me he hasn't been doing much with it this week. What's been going on this week, Karthik? Uh, very little lawn-related, to be honest. Um, I've just been a bit busy with work. I've got a new role that I'm training for, so all of it... I feel like a uni student again. I feel like yeah. I'm 20 years old, back in the classroom, doing a whole lot of training. So it's literally been go to work, come home. That sounds get like the, my nightmare. Yeah, get the kids ready, and then once they've gone to bed and the house is quiet, I sit and actually study, which I haven't. Study. I haven't done that when I was sh when I should have been studying as a young uni student. But yeah, yeah I'm actually studying now because I guess I get paid for it now. Your brain's got to be rewired to do it again. Oh, like it's, I, it's hard work. It's hard work. Yeah. Anytime I have to do even a module or something for work, I'm I'm just I don't have the attention span. Yeah. And it's funny how like I can take in large amounts of information when it's stuff I'm interested in, like yeah. lawns. Yeah, exactly. But when it's, yeah, when it's not quite your passion, it's really hard to retain it. Well, that's generally the beauty of being an adult. You uh, get to choose the things that yeah. uh, you spend your time on. So not much lawn related. Uh, I did go to the internationally famous uh, Sydney Royal Easter show yesterday Easter with the show. kids. Brave man. That was, uh, it was fun, but it was... Do you enjoy it? Uh, no, if I had the choice, I wouldn't go pure. Like, if you can get rid of all the other people there, yeah. then I'd love it. Okay. If I've got to fight crowds, it yeah. doesn't matter what the events are. If I've got to fight crowds, I, I, yeah, I'm not the most social person. You'd know that. None of us are, right? We, was it crowded? Oh, my God. It was crazy. Yeah, we caught the public. So we did the whole thing. We caught the Sydney trains. When did you go? In Yesterday. So we got there about on Good Friday, 10, 30, 11 in the morning. So you don't like crowds, but you go on Good Friday. Well, the missus is the boss. She wow. made the booking. She said, we're going, and I followed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we were there from probably about 11 in the morning till they closed at like 9, 30, 10 at night. Did the fireworks, all of that? Well, yeah, the fireworks were sort of like on the way back. The fireworks were going off, okay. so we were just looking at that as Do well. Do they still have the precision driving? They used to have the Holden precision driving team. I don't know. We didn't really catch shows. So what did speak. you do then? Well, my kids love animals. Oh, my older oh. one anyway. She absolutely loves the animals. So we just do probably more than half the day was just seeing the horses and the pigs and yeah, the cows okay. and the petting zoo and all of that stuff. We love that stuff. Any uh, wood chopping? 
A uh, little bit of wood chopping. Yeah. Um, I told my, my daughter was very curious on who watches it, and I said it's it's really buff men chopping down wood, so it'll all be mums. We went in, she looked at them, and when they're not very buff, yeah, they got a. Uh, there's a certain type of rig you generally have for that <laughs> wood chopping. Not if you look on uh, socials or whatever. Some of yeah. the guys doing it on socials, um, uh, you know, very easy on the eye if you're that way yeah. inclined. But um, yeah. So guess what? Um, wood chopping. When we peeked in there, and they have this really big um, bins in there, obviously to collect all the wood that's been chopped and I stuff. I see. And managed base services seem to be see. providing them services. So I thought our oh, team would be interested in that. Well, I went to um, the green waste facility to drop off um, Northwest Recycl- Norwest Recycling Centre yeah. to drop off some stuff the other day. And there were just piles and piles of hay. So they're obviously contracted to clean up every day That's for, right, yeah. for them. And then, yeah, I saw managed waste had some bins of the uh, split timber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I'm pretty broke after yesterday's uh, Easter show experience and I'm pretty sore too. My feet was killing me by the time we got home. What's the show bag worth these days? Uh, anywhere between about 30 bucks to 50 plus. Ooh, yes. Is that for the premium yes. ones though? Or? Nah, like no, no such thing as premium. I mean, there was one that was a kid's magic pen thing yeah. that my daughter looked and wanted and she then decided she'd browse and... You know, she'd spend the rest of the day and she still wanted it in the evening. She could get it. Yeah. Nine hours later, she still wanted it. How do you say no to that? She, and she had she had hundreds of options. She had chocolates and all of that. Yeah. But she, she, it's not, she went, nah, I like the magic pens. So they just, you know, arty, crafty. I must admit, I did jump on Amazon quickly to see if it was much, much cheaper. So I could get out. They sell them on Amazon? But oh, look, it, was, it was probably yeah. about five bucks cheaper yeah, on okay. Amazon to what the, it was at Easter show. So, yeah, she got one of them. Um, uh, they were the exciting, the... Um, uh, show bags back in the day. I used to. My favorite was the probably the Triple M or the Coke one because you got oh, an actual yeah. backpack yep. with it. But oh, they were yeah. only like ten or twelve bucks back then. My, my, my wife was pointing out the Cadbury ones, which used to be like two dollars fifty five dollars when she used to go to the Easter show and were yeah. thirty five bucks or something now. So yeah, um, uh, you want to take a few questions quickly? We got questions, have we? Yeah, a couple. Uh, you've got. Uh, when will you do the? Ooh. When are you gonna do okay, the? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Keep going. Yeah. When are you going to do the Ozito battery mower review, which people have been asking for? Uh, yes, good question. Um, I, I have some footage of it. I should probably edit that. I just want to try it on a few different lawns mm-hmm. before I uh, put it out. Like I could put it out now, but it's basically been buffalo and a little bit of Sir Grange that I cut it with. So I yeah. just feel I should try a few more cutting conditions before I put it out. Uh, this one's funny because someone actually said was good bumping into you at the show yesterday. So I actually had two different people bump. Did you get recognized? Up, two different people come up to me. The first time it happened, I went, like I was uh, picking up some food. And when I went back and told my wife and daughter, they didn't believe me. They thought I was making it up. And then it happened a second time. But that, this time, my daughter was with me as well. Wow. I think she was secretly proud of her dad for being recognized. Or, really? Yeah. Yeah. But and someone it- said, hey. So, hey. Thanks for coming up and saying hi yesterday. There you go, Karthi, yeah. getting out and about. <laughs> so that was me. He used to show no was, lawn Was there related. anything uh, lawn related there? Uh, I didn't. I, I kept an eye out. Didn't really see anything. There was a few bits of like farming equipment, but not really lawn related stuff. Yeah. Um, I sent you that short clip of um, those window, robotic window cleaner thingies. Yeah. They sort of work like the robot mowers, but they somehow mm, attach to your windows and shower screens. Yeah, and they like suck on to the... Yeah, yeah. and then Ecovacs they... have one. I did see it at the launch of the, the goat, their robot mower. Yeah. Um, yeah, it did look pretty impressive. It'd, you've seen my windows at home. It'd no, be quite I have not paid attention to your out windows. Out the back. They're just looking out the back. Yeah, well, I've looked through the windows to your lawn. I didn't pay but attention to your lawn. It's, uh, I mean, you're... But they're ground to ceiling... Yeah, like, okay, I'm sure they're impressive. Are you forcing me to say I've paid attention to them? Anyway, <laughs> it would be perfect uh, to, to clean those. So you haven't actually tried them, though? You I haven't one. tried it. I might ask them at some stage, but I've, got, I've, got a, I've still got their uh, robot um, vacuum at the moment. You yeah. were happy with that one, I remember, because especially yeah. after you tried the... Well, that's why I haven't uh, sent it back yet. Okay, cool. Um, I'm trying... X, uh, which one is it? The X1, I think. Uh, it's, it's their premium one that okay. mops and... Nice. Um, yeah, obviously vacuums. Vacuums and mops, yeah. Um, I haven't had it on carpet until now. We just got a rug. We got concrete, polished concrete yeah. floors. So it's been great on them. It's just good. Like I set it to go off at 6 a.m. I come down and you don't feel that any grit or anything yeah. on your yeah. feet, which is just lovely for me. Uh, if you've got kids, like my little one, they obviously have sandpit at every daycare. I think it looks oh, like yeah. landscapers need to stop putting sandpits at daycares. Yeah. Kids love it, but 
God, the amount of sand they bring back I in. You, I could do a long run over that. On, on hard surfaces. Yeah, it yeah. does my head in. But yeah, that, that um, goes well. It's, you're not going to set it and then never have to think about it again. It's always going to get every now and then caught in something like under a stool or an awkwardly shaped pot holder or something that mm-hmm. I've got. Um, but overall, yeah, works really well. I've actually got, I'll, I'll, I was going to talk about it later, but uh, I've got a cheaper model one that I might give you to try it. Well, what sort of floors have you got? Just tiles down the bottom Just tiles. and carpets uh, upstairs. Well, th- yeah, this is the My Genie. I've got the uh, link here. I'll, I'll bring it up so you can have a look. Um, yeah, it's a much cheaper version because the, the one that I'm using is, you know, the guts are two grand, I think. Okay. Um, but, yeah, really good machine. That'd be good. I, I've been wanting to get one. The price has discouraged me from getting one previously. It'd be good to test one for... Well, there's a massive see whether they like range it. of prices too. Yeah, That's yeah. the, the um, um, hard thing. I've got Connor. Connor's the one who invited me to go see the uh, golf course lawn renovations that I did last year. Yeah. Remember I went with? Was He's it? asking you if you're planning to go to the Turf Conference trade show this year. I didn't know there was one. I haven't had an invite, so probably... Uh, <laughs> oh, is it an invite only? Well, I don't know. Let I, us know, it, Connor. It sounded <laughs> something very... Um, official that you'd be invited to yeah. so we have been invited actually down to Berry. i don't know if i told you this or not to um go and have a look at lawn solutions headquarters who do a lot of the turf that um lawn solutions australia yeah sorry you're looking no no, no it's okay no no i, I don't think you told me but i, I thought oh. you were going to bring up the other event that was to do with equipment remember we t- we briefly oh, chatted about it i think that's already happened Okay, but um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, we've been invited to their headquarters I'd love that. to yep. go and check out, um, yes, yeah, some of their test plots and uh, whatever else goes yeah, on yeah. there. So yeah, they they uh, are the Be people a good road that, trip. yeah, they're the people that do, um, yeah, Sir Grange Zoysia, Sir Walter Buffalo, Correct. Tiff Tuff, um, yeah, all the the lawns that you probably know and love. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to do a road trip down there at some point. And, uh, yeah, that'll be probably our next trip. We'll, we'll show that. But um, this robot vacuum I've got, yeah, the, the, as I was saying, the price range is $480 on their website. But I've noticed if you Google it, it can, it's been – I've seen it as low as 300 bucks. Okay. It's meant to be – well, not meant to be. It is a vacuum and mop. Nice. I don't know how well it'll work. Yeah. I tried it on my – it wouldn't work with my router. Okay. So um, I think – because mine was a dual bandwidth or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've got I'm a new one since then, so I'm going to try and see if I can hook it up. But I want to give it to you to give you a go, see what you think of it, and then uh, I might have a turn after you. But it's the My Genie IQ360 Robot Vacuum Wi-Fi Control. Sounds amazing. Nice. Yeah, it has a remote control as well, which seems okay, a little bit interesting. odd, but um, that's the pictures of it there. I guess you want to do a single spot somewhere or something, you just drive it up there with a the remote and do that spot yeah, and put it back know. to charge. Who we'll knows? see. Anyway, you give that a go. Um, what were we saying just before that? The, uh, yeah, what else is going on? Anything else? No, not Nothing really. with your lawn? Not much. Not, nothing crazy with my lawn yet. Um, I should have overseed it ages ago, but I'm waiting for a couple of things to fall into place, and that's just taking forever, and it's frustrating Life me now. Life gets in the way. Yeah, and it's just starting to get annoying now, so I don't know how the overseed's going to go. I'll probably still do it anyway. If it fails, it you fails somewhat to too you fast. You have to do it. Yeah. I need to see it because I won't be able to this yeah. season. So We'll see what version of overseed. I don't think it'll be a crazy thorough one. We'll see. We'll see how I go. I don't know. I Hopefully. put my new lawn in. Well, my test patch. Ah, not, that's right. Not, not mine. Um, yeah, I've got about nine square metres of um, Zoysia Australis. That's the brand new. Not, not the makeup brand. It's a uh, it's a new <laughs> type of Zoysia. Uh, I would say it's got like a medium leaf. It's very soft to Correct. touch. These rolls that came were beautiful. You know, sometimes you get some rolls and they're a little bit haggard or whatever. Yeah. Was that specially cut for you, you reckon? Or was it because it's no, such a small quantity they could cut it on the same day? I don't know. Well, I, I think they normally cut that day anyway but uh depends 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 on the quantity yeah they can't always cut on the same day obviously turned up looking yeah absolutely beautiful um took you know all the 10 minutes to lay it which is great yeah um i really like the look of it my next if i have a shady you know or part shade area it's definitely going to be the one i try if i'm still at my place now where i am um i will most likely redo the kaikuyu out the back and put Australis instead. Yeah, and try and address 
the drainage. At, yeah, try. Yeah. I don't know what exactly I can do. At least you could run it off into the garden beds or something. Maybe, so, yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. run an ag line, yeah, across the bottom and then down into the, the garden bed. But, yeah, I think it, it just... Oh. I don't know. I just love the look of it. I made a little post on on my stories, and I saw, I saw it. Yeah, it looked, it looked good. Yeah, uh, it says shade tolerance up to seventy five percent. So I can, think the biggest one's going to be if it can handle at least sort of moderate levels of traffic on well, it. Well, there you go. It says medium for wear, wear, yeah. which yeah. Um, is good. Um, drought resistance medium, mm-hmm. maintenance low, leaf medium. They say estimated cost fourteen to eighteen dollars. A square meter. I haven't actually bought to that, for that'll a while. drop. That I think it's right now because most farms are just sort of starting out with the process. Remember when we went visited um who was it at Windsor? Must have. Must have. Like yep. he said, they like they're still growing it out, obviously. Yep. So I think the price will drop over a period of time, maybe. We got invited to another turf farm this week as well. <laughs> Invites coming everywhere. <laughs> turf related stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna um just tend to that. Uh, I've just be, I kept it moist for the first three days because I was on shift or mm. I asked someone else to do it. But it'll have a three-day spell where it's not getting water, any water. Okay. I think it'll be okay. Like, it, I, it'll hang on. Yeah, it'll well, hang on, of course. Obviously, ideal scenario is where you can just sort of keep oh. it moist. But I've seen particularly at some new builds and that where some turf's just been thrown down in the middle of summer. Yep. You just see it like completely dry out and it looks garbage for a few yeah. weeks and then just comes back once we get some rain. Yeah. Have you done any research around um, herbicides that you can use on it moving forward someday? I know it's a small no. patch, but look, if it's if it's homeowner targeted, one of the downfalls of Zoysia was like, I think, lack of possibly herbicides that can get, say, Kaikuyu or Kucha out of it. Really? Well, there's not much because they've, uh, from my understanding, anyways, Zoysia and Cooch have such similar sort of growth habits that okay. anything anything that'll knock one will knock the other. Unfortunately, uh, I'm sure there is options out there. I don't know how many of them are legally allowed. So yeah, okay. be curious. Well, I mean, as, as you know, I try and avoid Sorry. spraying if I don't have to. Anyway, quick question, I guess: Have you tested the Husqvarna battery trimmers and combi system? No, I haven't. I, for, I mean, I, I've got some contact with Husqvarna, and I have. I've got their 525 LST and the 535 LK, which are their two-stroke uh, trimmers. Mm-hmm. Um, I got those after they couldn't get stock at the time. Um, going back, I don't know, six, 12 months, it was very hard to come by batteries for them. So they couldn't get any stock of them. But, yep. um, yeah, I've I've asked to try them. Okay. We've spoken about trying them, but it just they hasn't been eventuated. Able to get it okay. We do have their uh, competitor, though, sending some stuff out in the next couple of weeks. Who's that? Still. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm not sure which. They they said there was like half a dozen products, and I said, please, can we just do one at yeah. a time? Yeah, because still it's usually very, very, um, what's, I don't know, shy, I guess, because you don't see much sort of on Instagram from people. No, it's not that very. That just gives away their products to try. No, you don't see random yeah. homeowner, Bra- yeah, quote, pages. unquote, influencer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, generally, I don't know. I think they're just very conservative and traditional in their marketing. You still see, you know, I see a lot of TV ads for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, a bit of old school marketing, yeah. yeah. But I, I it works for them, obviously. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's clearly worked out for them. And they, Well, they're a big brand. So but when they've eventually picked someone to give their product to, mm. they've picked, like, if you try and name, like, two or three of the biggest social media personalities in this country, mm. I'm just kind of going, I don't want to say you're the biggest, so I'm kind of going, you'd be in that list. And if they pick you to send some products out to test it out, so they, they might have old school marketing previously, but they're not giving it away willy-nilly and they've picked ideal, yeah, yeah. an ideal person well, I think to give it to. Well, again, not, not, not because of me, but I, I think that for any brand, I think personally that's smarter. I see a lot of, there's a lot of people that, and obviously I'm one that tries all different gear, but I mean, the page is Turf and Tools. I, this is where I try equipment. So yeah, the, but the I think business that, is kind of based yeah. around that. But you see a lot of homeowners that are sent stuff by a brand and then three weeks later there's another brand. And I don't, I don't see the value in that. For, for the homeowner, it's great. But Look, for the brand, I just... Yeah. I think my, what I like about your, like say, the Turf and Tool page and how you do the reviews there is mo- most other pages... Mm. Um, you kind of open it, like, it, it's usually like an unboxing video. This is me included, by the way. Um, in terms of showing the product, we kind of show the product and then we read up on the product and we read the specs out. Yeah. And then we've got a couple of footage of the product getting used. Yeah. But there's no real sort of 
real life feedback on how it went. There's yeah. no longer term reviews. There's nothing along those lines at all. But on your page, you're less worried about making it a pretty unboxing video and more about actually well, yeah. just putting Init- it through its work. Initially, when I started the page, I was you know trying to think about, and that's what slows me down in doing these things because I'm like, oh, I want to do a proper review video and present to the camera and this is what it is mm-hmm. and go through the specs. And number one, I think that's boring. Um, number two, it's just not efficient. Yep. I, I found recently just with like doing the, the vlogs on Turf and Tools, it's just, hey, this arrived, let's go use it. It's pretty raw, it's pretty, there's you know not as many cuts. But as a consumer myself, if I was looking to buy something, that's kind of more what I would want to yep. see, not something that's overproduced or... Yeah. And, yeah, I think when you start making these videos, you have this um, tendency to want everything to be polished and, and go and do these, um, you know, cap cut templates. So it's all flashy and all that sort of thing. But um, I just I think the raw stuff is a lot more engaging for me that I watch anyway. Yeah, look, the, this, the, I guess the cap cut versions that you talked about, that's sort of generally more for introducing a product to the audience. Yeah, so from but, if bra- you're, but if you're a home user of that product, like, I don't know, why are you trying to uh, make a brand style video? Oh, like that's, I mean, that's, yeah. that, that's that style of social media that I know you yeah. don't do, but I guess that's where but that's yeah, again, it's, coming from, yeah. I'm not bagging anyone, yeah. I'm just saying from me as a consumer, I just want to see someone using it for real yeah. or whatever, not trying to produce, oh, this is a flashy bit of... Yeah, fair enough. Like product, um, I don't know, what's the word? Like product advertising. That, Pretty much, yeah. 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 I don't know. It's uh, easy to overthink this stuff, but, yeah, I've just been trying to do... Um, yeah, pretty basic stuff. Another product I saw... Oh, you got a question? No. No, you got good. nothing. Uh, there was a couple I think I might have missed, but... Um, Karthik. Connor from earlier on said we Gave the two of us should probably we should apparently do a re- Scotty rebuild, but no, yeah, I don't think I've that's done, happening. Yeah. I'm mechanically handicapped. Literally, I have I've, no mechanical skills. Well, that's that's where you learn that stuff they're, yeah, because they're, so. they're pretty. Once you pull it down and have a look, they're yeah. actually quite basic in in um, construction. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'd rather get someone that knows what they're doing to build it, and I like I the, like using it. <laughs> if you've got the time, <laughs> yeah. It's a, a fun project to do. I don't have the time now, so... Because you did sort of semi-rebuild your old yeah, Scotty, done, right? Yeah, I got them, um, uh, you know, back to bare metal and painted them myself yep. and then scrounged around for yep. parts when there weren't all that many parts mm. around. And Sorry, for those listening who don't know what a Scotty or a Scott Bonner was, they're this sort of 40 to 50-year-old 50 50 year old brand. It's an Australian sort of lawnmower I brand that used to make this even, uh, cylinder mowers. Mm. They're not in uh, business anymore, but their mowers are highly sought after still. Sort yeah. of like a half collector's item, but they still work 50 years later with a little bit of love, so they're very popular. Hey, uh, product that I saw, this came up in my Instagram feed, and I was, I was kind of, uh, what's the word? Karthik and he's tapping. Um, it looked pretty cool. Uh, again, oh, I'm not 100 percent sure of the application of it, but this is the roll away um, hose hose reel. So it's like your traditional hose reel, but the difference with this one, the actual box for it and the reel is actually like recessed into the ground. So yeah. It. I'm just showing Karthik video of it now. It's Someone interesting. Pulling it out. Um, still connects to the tap. I was going to say you got to plumb it into the ground, obviously. No, the tap just goes in through the top. I'm not sure if there's a... There you go, he's digging a uh, hole out the there. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, it's, yeah, basically you've got a hose reel built into the ground. Yeah. So it's out of the way, not up out on of the sight, wall. Yeah. Or, uh, which may be of use to someone. They are Australian made. I hadn't heard of them until nice. I saw this video. What are they called? Uh, roll, away, roll away underground hoses. Almost invisible is what mm. they say. <laughs> um, they've got 649 followers, so they obviously haven't just started or anything, but... This is the, oh, here we go, roll away coming soon. When was that? April 20. So they've been around about a year by okay. the looks of it. Uh, we might have to see if we can try one of them at some stage. That's cool. I'm sure there's, yeah, there's specific situations where they will come in handy. That yeah. I could use one at, at my place in the garden because I pull my in the front. hose reel around the corner from a wall and it's kind Same of snagged me. on things. Yep. But yeah. So I thought that was interesting and cool that they're Australian owned and made. Uh, you don't see a lot of that anymore. But uh, another cool thing I saw, I think you'll have some thoughts about this. Uh, I haven't showed you this, 
we've seen a lot of robot mowers of late, um, you know, LiDAR vision and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and they're all, you know, some of them look funkier than others, but they all generally, um, I mean, it's hard to... Like make, for like, they do this somewhat, yeah. similar jobs of them, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, there's been a lot more ones that don't require guide wires now. You know, you don't need to plant a boundary wire so they Correct. know where they're going. Um, they've got a lot more sensors on them now. This one, one of the viewers sent this to me, which thank you for that. If you see anything interesting, let me know because, mm -hmm. number one, I'm uh, keen to see it, talk about it on here, but also hit them up and see if we can try it. But this <laughs> is a robot mower, but... It's a cylinder robot mower. Yeah. And a, you know, residential style, not not a big machine or anything. It's got looks like it's got a rear roller on the back. I'm curious on what the, uh, Again, what it's another Kickstarter. Okay, okay. And that's the, the is there, annoying. Is there images on what the like, only, only this. what it looks like, what the reel looks like or anything? Uh here we go. Well, there you go. Oh, I mean, that's there a, you go. That looks like it. Is that a real image? Yeah, it is. Oh, but it throws to the back. Sort of like the old So like uh, a rear discharge yeah, style. Yeah, like the old Scott Bonner diplomats. Yeah. Which, I mean, it, it it's interesting in that, yeah, you'd get a great cut on your lawn. Mm. Again, all the usual cylinder mower issues though, isn't it? Exactly. How do you, I mean, every time you mow, mm -hmm. you're visually having a look on your lawn and if there's a branch or something there, you're going to kick it away. Or anything, yeah. or, or some gum nuts, whatever yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, little pebble. The thing with this, you're not watching it. It's just going off at four o'clock in the afternoon while you're still at work or something. It's funny how like it's exciting first look and then yeah. straight away we just all we can think of is all the problems as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I guess that's why no one's yeah. tried it yet. It's got the... Um, I guess same with cylinder mowing. You'd have to do a walk around first of sorts. But that doesn't make sense. It's a I robot know, mower. I know. So. I know, but it's, it's the price we pay with um, cylinder mowing, I guess. Yeah. The real again, I'm, this is there's very little information about this out yet. Yeah, it's a Kickstarter again. It is said. a Kickstarter, okay. so that means um, it's not actually a retail available product at the moment. Yeah. Um, if you're a backer, generally you get a discount on the final price. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that carries some risk with it. I don't. I don't think there's one hundred percent guarantee that you you get your um, gear from what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. If the the project might not go through. Yeah. In yeah. the end. Mm. So yeah. What are they called again? Uh, I haven't even said it's a terrible name. O Oasa, O O A S A O A S A O A S A R one real lawnmower reinvented with lidar vision perception. So hmm. it should be able to avoid larger objects. We've just got someone coming in at Store Hub here. We are we've chosen yet another location at Store Hub. We're actually in the storage facility if you're looking on the YouTube video. So hot outside, but yeah. yeah. A little bit cooler in here and obviously being uh, Easter Saturday, the office isn't open. But yeah, yeah what, are you, what are your thoughts on price of that? Or you look like you've got a question. No, no, no. Sorry, I, it's okay. Uh, price on this, yeah. it's not going to be cheap, I'll tell you that. And then, uh, like I said, um, hopefully they just out front, up front answer all the questions that we've already got about it mm. on how they're going to deal with issues like that. Because, yeah, real more was... What do you see the issues? Well, real mowers and anything on the lawn, any rocks, pebbles, any like branches, none of that, they don't go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You need a clean lawn for real mowers to work. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's a, it's a robot mower, so you're not watching where it's going. Yeah. You could walk through your lawn, but we've, even when we're mowing with a cylinder mower, we know we can miss little screws yeah, in the grass. Yeah, you just hear that ting and yeah, you're like, that's damn. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then you just hear it catching on the bottom blade. Exactly. Like, and obviously, let's assume you leave it on the lawn for 12 months and what happens with the blades when it needs to be sharpened again? That's my question. As well, yeah. How do you get it sharpened again? Does it come off? Yeah. So How, how do you get it sharpened? How do you adjust it? To, yeah, to keep the contact, right? Yeah, yes. You're kind of constantly adjusting those things. Well, if it's Someone's robotic, written maybe a big does paragraph it. there. No, nah, it's just a 36 volt Ryobi question. He's what got the it? line trimmer. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to buy the mower? Are they fine for regular cut buffalo on a normal size block or should I look at another brand? No. They've they've got, yeah, it'll, it'll absolutely work. Yeah. yeah, you just got to more often. You can't but expect it to... There's a caveat there as well. Yeah. There's like three or four different... 36-volt 36 36 versions. Mowers. So yep. there's the cheaper ones and then the, there's the HP ones, which you and I have both... Yeah. Have you still got yours? Uh, not anymore. No? Okay. Yeah. But um, there's a self-propelled one. Yeah, so there's plenty of options there. They're no different to any other battery mower in that if you mow regularly, 
um, and you have a normal residential style yard, you, you know, shouldn't have any issues with it. Mm -hmm. Only time you're going to come into issues is if you want to do a um, hard height reset. They don't go low enough. They don't go low enough and uh, even if they, you know, to get as low as they can, if you're cutting through really thick stuff, yep. the run time's going to go right down and you, you might get some cutouts and that sort of stuff. Correct. Yeah. So hopefully that answers that. But the yeah. other issue um, with this thing, I mean, cylinder mowers, you like a flat lawn. So you, you're you going to need a surface. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I don't I, – I wouldn't imagine this thing's going to cut super, super low. Mm. I don't think it's going to cut ultra low. Can, I reckon it's cylinder more. Well, is there a uh, – here but we go. it's going to be Let's high. Say. Oh, Oh, okay. 20 mm. Okay, that's impressive. Mm again. Uh, 20, to, 20 to 101 millimeters. 20 is impressive it's, for a robot mower, but impressive. I think 101 millimeters for a cylinder mower is impressive. Yeah, but you're not going to worry about little pebbles anymore. It's just going to take the tips no, of the grass that's, off. Yeah, if you're cutting higher. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It, look, it's an interesting bit of gear. It says it cuts within two inches um, of the edge. Edges, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, 15 minute setup, IPX7 waterproof, uh, 45% slope. Uh, yeah, interesting. I, I did email them to see if we could find any more information about them. Yep. Uh, That's I, a cool I looking will product. If you, we hear anything um, from them, uh, I also saw this week, and it was we spoke about it last week, the Ego commercial battery mower, the new one. No, no, you're good. Keep going. Oh, I'm just stretching my hand. <laughs> uh, of course, I can't get into that thread now. Um, the Ego commercial, the one that yeah, they everyone's did. been talking about. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are pretty excited for this machine. Mm -hmm. um, they dropped a screenshot with some specs of the machine, yep. which was cool for me to look at. Why is that not loading, Karthik? I hope we're still... Um, See, I, I know out. what it looks like. I've got it on my phone too. Have you? Yeah. Uh, okay, if you can have a look at that. Sure. Um, yeah, so this is Ego's new... Mower that they're going to be, you know, targeting contractors with. Obviously, it's a 53 centimeter mower. Uh, is that 21 inches? 53. I believe. I think it is. So yeah. 43 is yeah. is 17. So um, has an aluminium deck, which is a little bit different from most of the Ego mowers, which mm -hmm. generally have. Um, what have they got, Karthik? What plastic, commercial plastic ones? Plastic decks. No. Okay. Domestic yeah. ones. Plastic decks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it looks beefy. Yeah, I was genuinely surprised to see the weight, 46 kilos without batteries. Without batteries, yeah. So it's a solid unit. Yeah. It's still obviously going to have plastic components, sort of like um, where, your, yeah, we can see the, where it attaches onto the deck and stuff like that, I guess. Yeah. The handles are very different. The handlebars are very different to uh, the select cut. Um, it looks just, a, yeah, the deck just looks a lot more traditional than yeah than other because a lot of people seem to be saying this can like because from your from our last podcast mm. um where you said but and i agree to be honest um battery mowers aren't as versatile as yeah. petrol ones but this seems to be the one that people are hoping hoping slash on, yeah. sort of claiming that it will be as good as yeah. any other petrol mower on the market well yeah so for a bit of catch up uh yeah last week from last week's podcast, we were talking about, you know, battery mowers. And I did put a little clip together for Instagram and, and TikTok, mm -hmm. um, half intentionally knowing that it would... Get a reaction. Would trigger some people. Not not that it should, but I just know that that sort of stuff does. Mm -hmm. um, and all I was saying was that um, for me, um, no battery mower that I've used has had the versatility of a petrol commercial mower yeah and and by that i meant um can cut low do a, a hard scalp you know, a good height reset can do a finishing cut Correct. can also cut long grass yep um, and that that's all i meant by that mm -hmm. yes you can get them to do any of those things in a battery mail but you're just not going to have as much fun and they won't go low enough if you're doing a you know a hard height reset so that's yeah. all i meant by that but that but, did get a few people upset but yeah in theory upset because what they, they think you're wrong and battery mowers exist that well, can it do it whatever side whatever side of the fence you're sitting on mm -hmm. um 
people just sort of get a little bit emotional about it. So you had people going, oh, no, oh I, have you tried X, Y, Z? Mo- yeah. You know, that's not true. I've got X, Y, Z. And I'm like, yeah, I've got that mower sitting in the shed yeah. and I stand by what I said. I think people don't totally listen to what you're saying, though. Yeah. And all I said was the versatility. And, you know, the question should be, what do you mean by versatility? Yep. And it's just those things. But... I also quoted the things that are positive and that it has advantages over it. So mm-hmm. it was, it was kind of like a, I, I thought it was a, a, a clear. Yeah. It's funny, not so long ago, weren't you the paid plant that was plugging just battery equipment? Yeah, Maybe I the industry plant. It doesn't matter if I, if I show anything, I show battery, you get people in the comments yeah. going, why are you pushing this stuff? Yeah. It's garbage, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Um, I'm just happy to show, I mean, this, this is the forefront of what's being released at the moment. Correct battery stuff so you know there's not a lot of new new petrol, tech new tech petrol anyway. stuff coming out yeah and if, if there is it's not really not really any new tech coming out in the yeah. petrol stuff it's just a new mower with a better engine maybe but that's about it i'm the first to admit that i am a fan of yeah. both sorry i've got a question about this ego one mm. that caught my eye i don't i i just went oh that's a bit strange but maybe it's the norm in the commercial world i don't know what's that but the bit where it says it does obviously um all three styles of cutting, so you're like catching, mulching, and uh, side discharge. Does it say it does side discharge? Yeah, Where does it say that? But then it says side discharge is. I think you've got to pay extra for that. <laughs> uh, potentially, it's a. Mm. It might be like one of those rear side discharge shoots, yeah, like uh, the Milwaukee or the Makita have. Yeah, one of maybe. these. Maybe. No, it, it, it doesn't look like it. Side discharge. Okay, maybe maybe you're right. That maybe that would. I haven't it's seen a side poured on it, so I, I could be wrong. Where have you seen this? Are you Let making this up? up? No, I'm not. I'm telling you, that's why I had this picture. This is the same picture. I don't feel like, because it was on that picture. Let me Here put we it go. up quickly. Here we go. Do you it's see here. it? Yeah, three in one cutting options. Mulching, bagging, and side discharge. And yeah. it says asterisk side discharge sold separately. So that will be a one of those directional rear side discharge shoots, I imagine. Okay. I can't okay. imagine. Because I kind of went, look, else. it's not going to be a no. cheap mower to buy. Yeah. We already we've we've kind of talked a few times about like battery mowers and cost being one of those things and the battery cost. And I'm kind of like, so it's got the ability to do the three, but then you're gonna hold one back and have to pay. Ah, uh, yeah, I'd, extra for that. I don't one. know what that's about. That's a bit weird. Yeah, especially uh, okay. if it is just one of those plastic um, shoots. Shoots. Yeah, which I'm not a big fan of anyway. They seem it just seems another way for the grass to get caught because it's got to go out the rear shoot one way and then go out the different yeah. way. Yeah, uh, I'd be a big fan if it had the the true side discharge yeah. out of the deck so it wasn't just me that thought that was strange that they yeah. wasn't just built in yeah uh yeah i think it's odd mm. that it's not there but um meant to be out eta june 2024 they're on pre-order now i have seen it have uh, you spoken to them Total already Tools. i i messaged and said hey can we uh can we have a turn so mm-hmm. there there is a uh singular demo one getting around right. i've been told but right. um yeah i don't know we may or may not get to look at one before okay. they're released i'd love to uh, i know a lot of people are keen to find out a lot about it it says um commercial high talk this is the thing i was talking about last last week the, yeah. the talk numbers on this thing sound really impressive compared to petrol mowers mm-hmm. um but again all i'm concerned is uh like it says 20 newton meters max at, at 1750 rpm but the only thing i'm concerned is how that translates to actually cutting grass yep and that's yep. the thing I see with a lot of people, you know, flying the flag for battery stuff. Going, oh, it's got higher torque numbers than than uh, petrol mowers, and I'm like, might be, but it's just if my it, petrol mower doesn't yeah. cut out or automatically Correct. in half a second when I'm I get to a really really thick yep. bit. If you can maintain that torque numbers when you're throwing it into the long stuff, well, obviously yeah. with care, like you know, with petrol mowers, because petrol mowers can cut out as well if you just chuck it yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. But you but get a second to, chance with it because you can prop those front wheels. Yeah, and we tend to sort of go with the front wheels sort of a little bit higher mm. as well. So if you can do the same stuff with this and mm. it doesn't cut out and can maintain that speed, so then, it's just yep, sixteen hundred watt motor, mm-hmm. and they say it's equivalent performance of a two hundred and thirty cc petrol mower. Which, I mean, numbers... That's you know, impressive. More is better. Yeah. And, I mean, look, <laughs> the, it has been a brand. Though. They, they've done, over the years that we've seen them grow as well, Ego. Yeah. It's, it's been a sort of good brand in that they're innovative. They do seem to, like, they, they do seem to be sort of ahead of the curve with a lot of things. Yeah. And they seem to also be good at taking feedback and adjusting their product to suit as well. If so, I was just reading the um, specs. specs here... Mm-hmm. 
and not having tried any of these, I'd be like, wow, this machine's amazing. I can't wait to get it. Yep. Um, but you know, like my, um, the Briggs 190 on my contractor, that's, that's plenty of power. Yep. And they're saying this is, you know. Even more. Well, then a. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, sorry, the, the more. I just, hope it, I just hope it translates to cutting grass in the real world. Yeah. The, the first question, sorry, which is literally the first question everyone is going to ask. Price. Runtime, runtime, runtime. Battery, runtime. That's yeah. the one everyone wants to know. Well, it's almost What's on the pointless spec? having this conversation because, as you know, when yeah, they, yeah. When they post the, the runtime, it's going to be best case scenario That's when fine. you're nipping the top off it. Uh, they say with two 12 amp hour batteries up to 135 minutes. So, 120, more than two hours. Mm. Yeah. But again, how that translates That's to the right. real world. Yep. Uh, yeah, I hope that's that's true. Uh, skid only fourteen ninety nine. We did speak about this last week, or as in a kit with was it two twelve amp hour batteries? I think it was. Don't quote me on that. Sorry, but there's a kit with two batteries and charger for twenty eight ninety nine. I think it was with two twelve. Two amp batteries, hour. okay. Um, and the, then they usually throw in redemptions and stuff as well, so you'd probably get more value for that money. Yeah, I did see lowest height of cut was twenty mil. Okay. Which is good. That's yep. you know, better than a lot of other battery yeah, options. We're, we're getting down to sort of. I'd love to see fifteen. I'd love <laughs> to see fifteen. But the good thing about this is that twenty is going to be more achievable because it is forty six kilos without the battery. So yep. you're, you're looking over fifty kilos. Um, so it's going to sit down, correct, in the grass, and, and you're going to get more of a true yeah. And, and cut. Again, it could be nothing, but the way that design looks on there with the wheels mm. it feels like it might not have the deck deck scratching the surface issue at the lowest heights i just I feel guess like looking at the yeah looking at the hard state the depends how far recessed the mm -hmm. blade is which we worked out potentially is a, a safety issue for yeah. it. uh one thing i don't like yeah uh two point deck height adjustment which means front and rear See, I think, uh, I, know, I know you don't like it, we've talked about this before. I think that's not a bad idea. I, I actually think for battery mowers, mm -hmm. that's not a bad idea because then you can, if you're going into taller grass, yeah. you can set your front higher than the back. Yeah. And then you might sort of not have that battery cutting out issue as much. Well, you can, I mean, you can just pop the wheels a bit too. You might not know. need to, that's the point. Yeah. Again, it's just a... Annoying yeah. thing for, for me you. personally, yeah. and I mean it's very American style. That's correct. You see a lot of their machines have that. So yeah. um, this has obviously got its origins over there, and yeah. it's, they've, they've tried to uh, Australianize it. Well, yeah, they didn't want to change <laughs> it just for the sake of it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So it's good. Uh, some people like that, some people won't, but that's what it is. Twenty mil to one hundred and five mil, eight point adjustment, um, two point adjustment handle, three positions. What does that mean? Two point adjustable. So it's adjustable at the base and then what the length potentially? Possibly, yeah. Not yeah. sure. Yep. Okay. Variable speed self propelled. Uh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> 0.6 to 1.8 meters a second. Okay, that doesn't mean much to me. 85 litre bag, which is good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you can fill that up nicely. Uh, it's got a couple of steel. Bumper Bump bars, and I guess they can be used as, as handles as well. The weight is the most surprising thing to me. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are like, that's why they like battery gear, because in the mowers they can be lighter. Light but, you know, we're, we're talking compar comparable to some commercial self-propelled petrol mowers at, at that. Um, it's probably the, the most interesting or the, most, uh, the thing I'm most keen to try. Yep. That's coming up. That I'm not aware of at the moment anyway. There nice. might be something else, but I know there's a lot of people that um, are keen to see how this thing goes. Mm -hmm. You're just stretching again? I'm just stretching my elbows again. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's the Ego uh, LMX 5300 SP. Uh, 56 volt commercial, 53 centimeter mower. Uh, are you going to buy one, Karthik? No. Wow, okay. What am I going to do with the commercial mower? Overkill. It's all right. Toys. I'll just borrow yours. Hey, did you see? I'll bring this up because I know they like being talked about because it's, I mean, it's it's better to be relevant than okay. than not talked about, if you know what I mean. I, just, yeah. I Like I know I've seen a lot of their posts and it's, you know, they they try and trigger the audience, audience. a little bit, you know, which, which gets you a bit more traction. It sounds like you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sounds like the old you. Well, anyway. it's easier for me to do because I'm just an individual, but <laughs> yeah. this is a larger company that does it. So I'm curious. People huh? love putting the boot in whenever they uh, see anything 
that they may or may not agree with there. Okay. But, uh, Jim's mowing. Oh, what's Jim done now? I'm not sure if it was on, um, I think it was on their main account, their Jim's group account. Yeah, what's he I done? I saw it posted in Lawn Mowing Contractors Australia. Someone posted it. How to get rid of weeds by Jim. He, he says that, you know, a lot of people like using... Um, uh, poisons and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, he doesn't. He's got this technique where he just gets a shovel. Is that the video there? Yeah, I'm showing Carthy. Oh, 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 Jim, Jim, why are you screaming at me? Welcome to the podcast, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a special guest today. Uh, yeah, so Jim's got a GoPro on showing how he uses a shovel to basically just dig the spade into the ground, then turn it over. So you've, you've got, you know, your That's soil on it. Yeah, I know. I, I would imagine that, like, I mean, you've still got all the seed heads there and everything. I, 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 I reckon Jim's puts, Jim puts these videos out, sits back, and then just has a proper laugh at the comments afterwards. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's better to be relevant yeah. than, um, I don't know, Yeah, yeah, not perfect, talked about forgotten. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the good thing about social that's media. Nuts. You can be a little bit um, out there like yeah. that. You don't have to be... Can you imagine how long it's going to take, too? Yeah, um, but I, yeah, I saw someone posted it in Lawn Mowing Contractors Australia and obviously yeah. people were smashing him about that. And then <laughs> on the TikTok, people, someone said, Jim's lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Jim's fine, what I'm sure. He knows watch. what he's doing. Oh, someone's, oh God, you're getting old. See how out of breath you were trying to do that all day long for your clients. Get a grip, Jim. Dude, the guy is getting old. Yeah, Give he, him a yeah. break. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually impressive that he's doing that even for a video. Yeah, but you know what? It's done its job. Yeah. We're talking about it. Not that this is the most listened to podcast in the world, but um, if people are talking about you, you're relevant, aren't you? And, and that's <laughs> that's important. But do you want someone doing their weeding like that at your? Me? No, no, no. no. I no. prefer someone going, no. hey, let's maybe we can you know uh, what? put a pre emergent down here. Yeah, ap- apply the right chemical in a safe way yeah. and it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. There's enough uh, pollutants in the world yeah. that a home lawn, even mm. everyone's home lawn, isn't making that much of a difference. If the product's used right, yeah. used in a safe manner and not overused, it'll be fine. That's where I stand on the topic. I'm no, not saying I, Jim's wrong. I agree. I try and avoid it as well. Yeah, if, 100%. If I to, having said that, I did. Uh, apply some pre-emergent to my back garden beds yep. to give that a try. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd never thought of doing it before. Only I've heard of people doing it sort of uh-huh. recently. I've, yeah, okay. I just I've just always thought about it for my lawn, so, but not the garden yeah. bed. I've used the you know the Bunnings pre-emergent, the granular. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah when it came out, I wanted to test it out. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want it up for my lawn, but the, uh, the front garden bed I had up where the putting green section used to be. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried it on there. Works. Works fine. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah, because it's not so expensive up front anyway. Okay. From Bunnings, I had some leftover um, chemical from uh, back in my early days before. You know, a lot of these one liter or five hundred mil bottles <sighs> yeah. weren't around. That's right. Even three, four, oh, yeah, five years ago. Correct. Um, so I had some very old stuff. So I don't know how it'll go. I, I don't know what the shelf life on that stuff is. Yeah. But does poison bought... get more poisonous? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I bought um, back in the day yeah. four liters or a five liter thing of, of it pre-emergent, and it, you know that would be enough to last me a lifetime for my personal lawn. Mm-hmm. Um, You're a big man by based on um, Australian lawn podcast story. Remember? Australian lawn garden podcast. Yeah. Yes, I did see yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how, you've you've just waiting to see how it goes, is it? Uh, yeah, I applied it to about eighty percent of the back garden and then left the rest to ah, see. Nice if it is actually working. Cool. It's, and again, it's probably not the best test because the stuff is quite out of date. They don't actually even... I, I think that brand isn't on the market now. No, I, don't, I don't think because it was an, an issue. Um, I the just, company is not in the market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I did try that. Um, I didn't try the uh, turn the soil over. Cool. Personally. I reckon Jim would be a proper laugh if you sit down with him on a beer, right? I don't know. I, I, I reckon. I, uh, some of these videos that pop up, I watch it and I go... He's got to be a funny guy in person. Um, I met Think him once. Did you meet him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a cringe story. I've got some cringe footage oh, of no. me with Jim that I never released. <laughs> 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 I, they, they had me down for their, uh, they had a family and trade day. Yeah. Which was kind of random. I'm like, I didn't know why, what they wanted me there for, but I'm like, sure, I'll come down. They flew mm-hmm. me down. And, um, you know, the, it, this was right when I started Turf and Tools. And I'm like, oh, there's going to be all trade tents there and that sort of stuff. So I got some went around 
again, didn't make use of the footage because it was very early days and didn't really have any idea what I was doing with the, the turf and tools thing. But, um, yeah, we just sort of wandered around the show. Uh, they didn't really ask us to do anything. Okay. Um, I had a quick interview with Jason Hodges, like a you know, one-minute thing or something. Okay. Um, he was like the MC of the, the day. And, yeah, I was just getting around filming stuff and then I saw Jim – Towards the end of the day, they were doing a giveaway, and he was just sort of sitting um, back watching. And I can imagine people had been coming up to him all day. Oh, and, yep. Um, and I've gone up there, and I had my camera and the microphone and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, oh, you know, come all this way. Better get a comment out. Of At least say hello, yeah. And uh, yeah, I explained, oh, hey, how you doing? Blah blah blah. Here for, you know, what we're here for. I didn't really know, but <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I really should have thought of a, a question to ask him. And then I'm like. Tell me, you know, the one of the most asked questions I get is, you know, what what's your number one tip starting a, a lawn mowing business? Yeah, and I'm like, oh, why'd you? And I just saw his face, kind of, you know, almost like he didn't, not he didn't, again. But I'm yeah. just like, I could almost see his eyes rolling in the back mm-hmm. of his head because it's like, like that's my fault. It's like, why do you ask the most generic question, question. ever to a guy that's been pestered all day? Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then he went through an answer that fine, there was no no issue there. But I'm okay, just like, so he gave you an answer still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he did. But yeah. I'm just like me, I, I just asked the most Barry basic question, and I'm like, I just felt like I was getting in the way there. Right. Okay. I just when you said cringe story, I thought like. Well, then I went Jim, to um, Jim ripped your head was, off or something. It was towards the end of COVID times, and um, I then went to shake his hand, and he went ah, ah, ah and wanted to do the elbow touch, ah, and it was that. Right. I'm like, oh, this really hasn't gone well. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got footage of that. It's Have the footage of the whole yeah, interaction yeah. can we wow i need oh. to watch this <laughs> I, I uh yeah that that's my only uh, sounds real uncomfortable which he would makes have me no happy. idea who, who yeah, i am yeah. so well now he would have nah. you see, okay, look at the other video just down there where you, where you looked at before. oh i did see well I, again i like i mean he's not sorry he, if anyone if you don't know what i'm talking about um there was a video i watched on gyms as well which was um the free more fridays version I didn't see step. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I got tagged in it, and <laughs> quite a few people sent it to me, like I would be offended or something. But um, I mean, if yeah, Jim doesn't like know who you are, their marketing people know who they are because they've borrowed your idea. Jim did a uh, door knock, um, free community free. mowing yeah. video, and again, people were sort of jumping on them <laughs> <laughs> in the comments. Um, yeah, but again, like he's not running there social media or, or anything so he wasn't in the video or anything but yeah i think they did like a four or five part little series of this cleanup i didn't see the, okay. the final bit of it so um yeah very quick to it's very hard like doing what i do as an individual i think the appeal is oh it's just this one guy he's turning up or whatever but when you mm-hmm. turn up as a big uh corporation is the word or, or you big, know big yeah. company big yep. business um with money behind you or whatever and you, you're getting in on the, uh, you know, s- stuff that is, you know, community service. Goodwill. Quote, um, yeah. If yep. you're trying to get in on goodwill content as a large business, uh, I think it's harder for them. Yep. yep. Whether, you know, whether the intention is just for publicity or actual goodwill, it's like, yeah, they've got a harder eye on them. Yep. Yep. They're um, going to they're gonna get flack, yeah, because people yeah. aren't that trusting necessarily of a yeah. big company. Yeah. Well, the other thing was I, I've seen... TikToks of, I saw a TikTok of, of Jim saying... Uh, that I'll send you Jim's number, get him on the podcast, <laughs> Australian Lawn and Garden podcast. <laughs> was, oh, Luke's listening, is he? Yeah, Luke's listening. How are you going, Luke? Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I saw another TikTok where Jim was saying, you know, I never give a discount, you know, you never, never discount or whatever. So a lot of people were highlighting that. I thought you never give discounts and... <laughs> Free is um, not a discount. Free yeah, is free. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so another, yeah, they got jumped on again. But I, again, I think they are, it's very intentional, everything they yeah. do. Yeah, you know? I, I think like, so. I think so. It's yeah. all about being relevant and, and front of public mind. And sometimes you've got to take a couple of hits, which, which I also do sometimes. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what else were we uh, going on about? We're getting, getting there. I think we've pretty much covered everything, haven't we? Have Did we? you have anything else? Uh, no, I think I've got random bits here. And I didn't there, get but that house, by something. the way. I don't know if I told you. you that's done and dusted. Put it that aside house now. Gone. Okay. Um, so we're still looking. I am exhausted <laughs> from house house shopping. hunting, man. <laughs> I'm, the good thing is, I'm a very impulsive person, and that's why you know I've made lots of purchases over yeah. the years of 
expensive equipment that I don't necessarily need. Mm. Um, so we've gone through that impulsive stage now yeah. to the point where we made an offer on something, we're going to buy it. It didn't happen. Now we're more studying the market and like more let's, let's find something that ticks the boxes and if it doesn't, let's, you know, take a breath. And But we've been looking at everything mm. like from... I don't want anything under 600 square metres. Yep. We even went out and looked at uh, how big was it? A couple of acres today. Nice. Just because we were in the area that yep. Open Home was, was there. And I just looked at it. I'm like, like I like mowing the lawn, but I'm like, I haven't got the time to maintain this property. Mm. Um, so, yeah, the house hunt continues. Hopefully okay. we'll find something. Well, someone just asked, can a battery mower ever replace a petrol mower? If so, how many years away? Well, this podcast pretty much, I think we've just hit on a product that claims it can pretty much do that. So, uh, should listen. Yeah, who, yeah, who well, knows? We'll see. We'll, uh, see. Again, well, I mean, yes, it can replace. Absolutely, mm-hmm. they can replace it. Well, he seems to think it hasn't, obviously, because he goes, if so, how many years away? We don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it d- depends what you're looking for. As, as I said in the last podcast, they offer different things. They're, they're different tools. They do the same thing um, in different ways and want, they excel in different things. Yes. I don't know why people it's, want battery mowers to replace petrol mowers in a way where it does exactly the same job. Like they want it to do... Well, I, I understand, do you know what I mean? I understand why and I'm the same. Like I like black and white. It's yeah. like, okay. So they want all the benefits of the petrol mower and then all the benefits of the battery mower as well in the one product. Yeah. That's what they yeah. want, yep. And I understand that. Mm. And they're, they're, I think a lot of the marketing for these things has led people to be disappointed. Right, yeah. With that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, fair enough. They'll, yeah, I, I feel like they'll get there eventually. Mm. With every, Like we've come a long way in the last three years even. Yeah. Since. Now, since, I just feel like sometimes like, it, I don't know, you look at any technological advances, mm. not every advance is always when it carries over all the benefits of the previous ones necessarily. Yeah. I mean, you went from horses to cars, but, you know, yeah, it's, they're not as... It's hard uh, to gr- pat your they're, car. Yeah, they're, but yeah, but they're, not as gre- they're not as green. There's no fertilizer coming <laughs> no, out of the back true. of the car. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just kind of going, it doesn't have to have all the benefits of a previous technology. Yeah. And it doesn't have to sort of cancel the other technology out either. You can have battery mowers continuing and fossil fuel doesn't have to go away completely either necessarily. The problem is it's such a nuanced discussion about it. I know, I know. That that's very hard to get across in marketing. Yeah, and true. Without, you know, it's, it, it's hard to market stuff. Yeah. So they, they have to do it the way they do it. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to articulate in the best way what... Where you stand on it. Yeah. yeah. I, like I know in my head... But it's very hard to put it in words. So, mm. And again, the, the best thing that I've, my best way to describe it that I've come up with is that, in my opinion, they're not as versatile in a range of cutting conditions. Yeah. Um, mm. If you have normal cutting conditions all the time, you, you, you're going to be fine. But it's when you need to cut really low or really high that they're yeah. not quite suitable always. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Anyone else on the uh, comments or are uh, we done for today? I might have missed maybe some, but no, it's everyone's okay. Apologies. Um, yeah, make sure you enter the uh, giveaway, the Milwaukee pruning shears and lawn mowing simulator. So we've got three winners to be announced on podcast number eight. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is comment Milwaukee on the YouTube Turf and Tools podcast yep. video of this podcast. So if you're watching this podcast on YouTube now, comment Milwaukee if you're from Australia and you are in with the chance. Apologies again for how I uh, <laughs> I thought we are going to be do- able to do it from uh, reviews, but um, we can't. So, yeah. Anyway, hope everyone has an absolutely lovely week. I am Tim the Lawnmower Man. My co-host here is Obsessive Lawny. Thanks he- for listening, everyone. He is on Instagram. Go and check him out. He is on TikTok also. But, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. See you next week. Catch you next time.